Hello, I'm Tom Long. Why don't you join me this morning on the beach here in the Carolinas as we listen to the gospel reading for the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat in the house of a prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. And then down in verse 7, when he noticed how the guests picked the places of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then, humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, When you give a luncheon or dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers, or sisters, your relatives, or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. Luke chapter 14, verse 1 and verses 7 through 14. Now, in verse 1, who is doing the observing and who is being observed? <laughs> Remember, last, last week we had the fiasco where uh, Jesus was being criticized and, and a woman was actually being criticized for being healed on the Sabbath. Now it's another Sabbath and Jesus is at the house of a prominent Pharisee, and they're watching him. And we may think in our lives that nobody is paying any attention to who we are, but for some people, you, as a God follower, may be the only witness of what it means to follow God, and your life is what they are seeing as the message of what it means to be a follower of God. But the tables turn, don't they, when we get down to verse 7. In verse 7 it says that Jesus is noticing how the guests pick the places of honor. Jesus is now doing the observing. And what he sees is people all vying to get ahead, to be higher than the person beside them. And I don't know how many times uh, I've heard someone being admonished as I was growing up when they did something that uh, wasn't going to be profitable for them or their family. They were told, that's no way to get ahead. Have you ever heard that? Well, here Jesus is telling us not the way to get ahead in the world, but the way to get ahead in the kingdom of God. And it's quite different, isn't it? In the world, you you strive to take the highest seat and put everybody else underneath you. But in the kingdom, the people that are humble, the people that are serving, the people that are giving, the people that are generous, they take the lower seat and we'll find out what happens to them in the end. Now, why do you think Jesus tells us to give our feast to the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind? Those are the people that society neglects. Those are the people, those are the people that are normally, we try to keep out of our vision, out of our consciousness, and put them out of sight. But Jesus says those are the ones he wants us to invite to our feast. Why does he tell us that? Well, he says, if you invite the rich people, if you invite people that are part of the mainstream, part of the power structure, they can repay you. We've all heard about networking dinners and functions and golf games and so forth. Jesus says, no. Forget about trying to get power through the world and instead serve those who have been disenfranchised. The people in the world can repay you now, but when you serve the lowly, 
Jesus says in verse 14, you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, he says, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So <laughs> it's, it is a hope deferred. It's something that we're not going to experience until we are resurrected with Jesus. But our repayment in the kingdom is going to happen at that time. So all of those people that took the high seats in this life are going to find themselves in the low seats <laughs> in heaven. And the people that were humble and serving and giving, they're going to be asked to move up to the seats of honor that were denied them in this life. Now, take a moment and just think about who have you known that was the greatest example of generosity? And secondly, as God's people, how does our generosity reflect who God is? For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. As we go forward in the days ahead, God, keep us mindful of what it means to humble ourselves and